Welcome back to Figure Depot. Today we're taking a look at the Rocketeer action figure from Diamond Select Toys. This is the deluxe version. It comes with lots of accessories. There was a stripped down version that was a Walgreens exclusive that did not include several of the pieces that come with this particular one. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the packaging. We have the classic Diamond Select style packaging. It's got the giant card back and blister bubble with the wraparound side. We get images of the products on the back and the different features and accessories. And yeah, love this style. A lot of people uh, think it's like excessive and kind of redonkulous, but I really like it. It's got charm to it and it's just a fun way to display the figures it kind of bridges the gap between our more modern packaging and what we got classically with card backs and blister bubbles so I like it a lot we get a double clamshell one side features the explosion coming out of the rocket pack and then the blueprints for the rocket which is a really fun touch I really like that a lot and then of course we get the helmet two little small flame bursts for the rocket pack if you don't want to display them mounted onto the base that is the explosion and then we get alternate hands here we get gloveless hands uh, relaxed and then we get um, like a weapon holding hand which he does not come with his mauser like the Funko version did so he's got a weapon holding hand and no weapon interesting then we get his little thumb ignition switch hand and then some relaxed hands then we get this interchangeable one where the chest piece can come off this is his fully buttoned up version and then we have the one where in several scenes in the film it's kind of draped down kind of halfway put on so nice little touch there with his jacket and how you can display him all right, so for a quick closer look at the accessories, we have his flame burst, which is painted really nice. Looks very cool. You can put a light under that um, on your display and it'll really shine it up like it's on fire. Look really good. Uh, we also get the blueprints, which were a really nice touch to this figure. Uh, if you've seen the film, if you haven't seen the film, go watch this movie. It is awesome. It came out around the time, like, Batman Returns came out, I think, so had a lot of competition. There were some other big movies that dropped around this time in 1991, and so I think a lot of people just missed it because of some of the other films that came out at the same time. It surprises me how few people love this movie. It is action-packed, full of adventure, full of comedy full of all kind of great stuff so awesome movie but uh these are the blueprints for the rocket that they try to chase down we get this awesome helmet the sculpt work is great it's kind of very iron man-esque in its design very 1930s in the motif really really cool looking helmet and then of course we get his button down jacket front nice paint gold paint on the buttons we have his relaxed left and right little flesh tone hands so those look good and then we have his gloved hands he has relaxed hands on the figure then these kind of cupping hands left and right and then we get a hand for his mauser but no mauser and then we get uh, his little rocket ignition switch hand, which looks really great. Two-tone leather, little gold buttons. So really nice attention to detail on those. And then finally, we get these two little uh, rocket pieces. And they will port into the back here, left and right. They just plug in. So you get a flame burst coming out of the rocket, which looks really awesome. And then, of course, you get this one that you can just mount him on. So you plug that in and then have him lifting off. And that looks sick. So 
really nice touch there. We'll get a closer look at the rocket pack. So here's the rocket. If you've seen the film, you recognize the bubble gum, although in the film, the gum was white, not pink. So I'm gonna go repaint that. I think they did it pink just because that's kind of classically, universally the color of bubble gum. But in the film, he chooses a Beeman's chewing gum, which is a white color. So a little miss on that detail. But the gold at the top of the rockets, the radiator, the little wires coming out. Everything looks really good. There's a giant hole in the back of the rocket for no apparent reason. I don't know if initially they were going to give him a flight stand with a mast and then we're like, hey, let's make a flame burst base instead. And that kind of got scrapped maybe. But uh, yeah, I don't know why there's a massive hole there now. So uh, the other version, I don't think came with a flight stand and base. I can't remember. This figure's a couple years old, so I'm not sure. Now, when you pop the little piece off to swap between the two, you can see he's got a harness underneath there, and uh, it is on there really snug. Um, I don't know how easily that can come off. I uh, don't think there's a little strap or any place where it buttons. Maybe there is. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Buttons in the back. There you go. So you can remove it by unbuttoning it. It only unbuttons on one side. So then you got to do a little finagling here. Probably pop the head off. There we go. So then you can get him with the head off. in his kind of dressed down street look. And that's kind of his plain clothed. And he rides a motorcycle in the film. So let's take a look at a couple motorcycle options. Maisto has a scale of 112 motorcycles and they are a little bit small. Um, Bikes were a bit smaller back then, probably, than compared to now, but it still seems just a little small. You can probably get away with it. Um, but yeah, that's one option. The other option is going to be your Legendary Riders motorcycles from uh, Hasbro Toys that come with their Rider series. So you can dress these up or down. Uh, swap the handlebars out um, with the different ones. You get the one Logan drives Wolverine and uh, it's got a more traditional setup for the handlebars. This is a more modern look here but you can see scale wise it is actually a much better scale. All right, for his articulation setup, you can get a good T-pose out of that. His shoulders are super tight in the package, so definitely want to put some heat on those. You get a bicep swivel, really nice bend on the double jointed elbows there. You get your swivels and your hinges at the wrists, great range there. We also have a head that can look up fairly decently, down, decent. Uh, you get a little bit of side to side. He is on a ball peg. Um, no torso articulation and no waist swivel. You do get a real good kick, 90 degrees, very slight kick back. Uh, we do get a split all the way. You have a bend here, a little cut just above the knee. You also have a cut um, below the knee and then you have a hinge. So all kind of crazy movement you can get out of the combination of those joints. No boot cut. You do get some sick ankle pivot and of course a great ankle rocker because of course he's got to point his toes down when he's flying. And then a uh, decent enough range forward for some action poses. All right so here's a look at him dressed up in all his gear with his gloves on, his jacket button, rocket pack in place, and helmet on. You can see he's got a decent upward looking range for that helmet so when you get him in a flight pose it's gonna look pretty good. 
and then of course we have him dressed down in his kind of street clothes look so a real versatile figure there with all the different accessories that you have all right here he is with a marvel legends iron man figure and you can see that they're pretty close in scale they're essentially the same height so diamond select is supposed to be a seven inch line but I think these Rocketeer figures come in a little bit on the shorter end. And then, of course, Iron Man's going to be a little bit taller of a 6-inch scale figure uh, than a standard human figure. So they kind of come in right around the same height. Here he is with the Funko Rocketeer figure. And you can see some differences. Uh, you don't get the two-tone gloves here. His pants are a little too yellow. The jacket isn't quite rich enough in color. This is more screen accurate. And uh, the gold is a bit more gold and shiny. This is a truer color for what we get in the film. So Diamond Select's really done a good job in nailing that uh, color palette. And also, you've got pins here that are real visible on the Funko. And this is pinless right here, so that's really nice. I do like the appearance of how they did the hips up here a little better than I like this kind of real notchy T-joint you got going on here. But, you know, it's a trade-off. And you got pinless arms on the Funko, but then you got pins here, so it's like they flip-flopped. But anyway, uh, you did get an alternate head with this one, just like this one. So either one's a great figure. I guess it just is gonna depend on if you collect in a more small scale or a bit larger of a scale. But I do think um, this is a much better design because the colors are more accurate and his legs are super floppy and loose over time while this one has maintained his rigidity in his articulation. So uh, I think that's definitely a plus. So I'm gonna have to give a win to Diamond Select Toys overall for the Rocketeer figure. Here he is with a McFarlane Flash figure and you can see that that's a true, you know, seven inch scale figure. He's much taller than the Diamond Select figure is. So, but he is supposed to be just an average person. So you can see why he would reasonably be a bit smaller. However, when you do put him against John Wick, he does look like a young teenager. <laughs> that John Wick figure is really tall. For a Super 7 comparison, here we have the Silverhawks Monstar figure, and you can see uh, he is a bit shorter than him as well. Here he is with a Mattel Jurassic Park uh, Owen Grady figure, and they actually come in around the same size, so it's kind of right in between that 6 and 7 inch scale, just kind of a good mid-range figure. If you have the Marvel Legends movie Logan figure, they come in right around exactly the same height, so that's definitely a nice little scaling there. Those movie figures were a bit taller than your standard Marvel Legend. And for another 1930s era figure, we have here Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. And you can see in their motif and design, they're very similar, the leather and all that good stuff. So uh, Indiana Jones is just slightly smaller framed and just a hair shorter than the Rocketeer, but you could still reasonably work those together in some kind of action figure photography. Here's a look at the flame burst. If it's lit from underneath, you can see it really looks really nice. A lot of uh, light is able to come through there. That looks really good. Final thoughts, uh, this is an outstanding figure, an awesome display piece. This can double as a display piece or an action figure with that awesome base. Uh, really good stuff here. I highly recommend this figure. Check out Diamond Select Toys. They have all kinds of awesome stuff. www.diamondselecttoys.com as well as their Instagram, Collect DST. Uh, just a fantastic figure. Lots of fun. If you haven't seen the movie, you've got to watch it. 1991, The Rocketeer, Walt Disney Pictures. And uh, yeah, just an awesome addition to any action figure collection. Thanks for tuning in to another Figure Depot action figure review. Uh, please check out my Instagram as well under the same name. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Please uh, like the video, share it. That really helps me a lot. Leave me a comment. Let me know, do you love this film? Have you seen this film? If you haven't, please go see it. It's so good. 
See you guys next time. Bye.